Today, we are visiting a demonstration farm on the campus of Illinois Central College. At this farm, visitors can see a number of conservation and farming practices on display. We will be checking out the newest practice, a constructed wetland, built to help prevent nutrients from leaving these fields in the drainage tile water. Like many farms throughout the upper Midwest, the demonstration farm applies fertilizer to support plant growth and uses pattern tile drainage to remove excess soil moisture from the field. Well-drained fields make it easier for farmers to get in and out of the field with equipment during planting and harvest and can increase crop productivity by improving the rooting environment for the plants. A pattern tile system is an effective and efficient way to create a well-drained field. Parallel rows of perforated tile called laterals are set several feet below ground and regularly spaced across the field. When there is excess water in the soil, the water collects in the tile through perforations or holes in the tile. The water then flows from the laterals to a main tile that empties into a nearby ditch or stream. Many of our Midwestern soils are naturally rich in organic matter and nutrients. Even with careful nutrient management on a crop field, some nutrients, particularly nitrates, can escape in the drainage tile water. On this site, they have installed a constructed wetland at the edge of the field to collect and treat that tile water and remove some of the nutrients before the water leaves the farm. As with all NRCS work, this wetland was designed and built using NRCS standards and guidelines to ensure a successful project. The constructed wetland takes advantage of several processes occurring in natural wetlands that remove nutrients. Particularly important here is a process called denitrification. Naturally occurring bacteria colonize the plants and soil in the wetland, using the carbon in the plants for energy and essentially breathing the nitrates in the water. When this happens, they convert the nitrates in the water to harmless nitrogen gas, which makes up most of the air in our atmosphere. In order to make this happen, a constructed wetland was planned so the main tile line could deposit water drained from the fields into the wetland and be treated. A little less than an acre of wetland pool area will treat tile water from the 35 drained acres on the demonstration farm. Constructed wetlands have a few main components. A pipe that delivers tile water from the field to the wetland. A shallow pool area that is generally 12 inches deep or less. A water control structure that controls the depth of water in the wetland. And an outlet pipe that allows water to leave the wetland after it has been treated. Water entering the wetland will meander around a long serpentine flow path through the shallow pool. This will give the denitrifying bacteria time to do their work. The plants in the wetland will also take up some of the nutrients and provide habitat for the bacteria. Deeper pools within the wetland will help distribute the water, creating a diversity of habitat for wildlife. The peninsula created by the serpentine flow path also allows researchers and visitors to walk out into the wetland area for closer observation. The Illinois Land Improvement Contractors Association constructed this project as one of their demonstration projects. Volunteers converged on the site in late summer to share expertise, try out different equipment, and build this constructed wetland. Because it was a demonstration project, more people and equipment were on the job than you would normally see for a constructed wetland. This project began with clearing and grubbing of vegetation and debris on the site. Brush was cleared away and the portion of main tile line that ran underneath the proposed wetland was removed to make room for the project. The contractors removed the layer of topsoil on site, stockpiling it for later use. Before construction began, the engineer and contractor laid out the location of the water control structures and key features within the wetland. This includes the structures, the peninsula, pools, and a berm. The first things to go in were the water control structures. It is critical to set them at the correct elevation so the wetland will fit into the landscape as designed. Although only one water control structure is normally needed, two water control structures were installed on this site. One near the outlet to control the water level in the wetland, and one upstream of the wetland that can be used to divert water around the wetland until the vegetation is established. The upper water control structure will also make it possible to collect water samples before the tile water goes into the wetland for research purposes. 
Once vegetation is established, the upper structure will be kept open, allowing water to flow into the wetland. The lower water control structure, responsible for controlling water levels in the wetland, included the installation of a solid outlet pipe under the berm. Anti-seep collars installed above and below the structure will help prevent water from finding its way along the pipe and potentially causing erosion through the berm. An animal guard was installed at the end of the pipe to prevent wildlife from making a home in the pipe and blocking the flow. Here, a tile boot is used to install 12-inch dual-wall tile around the edge of the proposed berm. The pipe sections are fed into the tile boot as it moves along and are manually connected to the section before. This tile will tee into the side of the water control structure above the wetland, run around the outside of the wetland, and connect into the pipe that outlets into the ditch. Once the main tile line was rerouted and the structures installed, the serious earth moving began. The shallow water area on this site was constructed using both excavation and earth fill. The clay material excavated from the pool area was used to build a low berm or embankment on the downstream side of the wetland pool area. Construction of this berm began with the excavation of a core trench, a narrow trench filled with compacted clay located directly underneath where the berm will be built. The core trench keys the berm into the existing ground and prevents water in the wetland from seeping under the berm. The berm was then constructed above the core trench in shallow lifts. Each lift was compacted with a sheep's foot roller. This method helps ensure that the soil is well compacted and the finished berm will not settle too much. The finished berm has an 8 foot top width and a gentle 5 to 1 slope on the wetland side of the berm for safety. This slope also creates growing conditions that will support a diverse community of emergent vegetation. Vegetation that grows partially below and partially above water. As they were excavating near the north end of the site, the contractors hit sand. Water started to seep in from the water table. The sand lens had to be removed and clay brought in and compacted to seal this area. In order to keep the footprint of the wetland small, surface water was diverted away from the wetland. The constructed wetland was designed to treat only the tile water flowing from the field, since this water is carrying higher nutrient levels. Surface water that would have flowed into the wetland was diverted around the wetland in a diversion channel. Fabric checks were installed in the diversion to help control erosion during and after construction. Should water levels in the wetland rise beyond what the main water control structure can handle, an auxiliary spillway, or a notch, was built in the berm to allow any high water to escape before overtopping and damaging the berm. To complete the grading and shaping of the site, six inches of topsoil were brought back in as a medium for growing plants. Roots don't grow well on heavy clay, especially after the soil has been compacted with construction equipment. Replacing topsoil was critical to a successful project. Once the topsoil was in place, the site was seeded and mulched with straw. The straw holds the soil in place and creates a favorable environment for seeds to germinate and take hold. A temporary cover of oats germinated quickly, holding the soil in place until the permanent vegetation was established. The first frost later in the winter will kill off the oats. The berm, auxiliary spillway, and diversion channel, all involved with the control of water flow, were seeded with a permanent cover of red top grass to hold the earthwork in place. The wetland area and upland areas will receive a permanent dormant seeding in late winter. A mix of sedges and rushes and other emergent vegetation will be seeded in the pool area and several native forbs and grasses in the upland area and early next summer plugs of emergent wetland vegetation will be added to enhance the seeding in the wetland. Plants are a very important part of the success of the constructed wetland. The vegetation in the wetland pool not only holds the soil in place and provides habitat, but is essential to the amount of microbial activity both in the water and in the soil that will make denitrification possible. During the first year, water levels will be maintained so the soil will be kept moist with an inch of water or less in the wetland. 
As the plants mature, the water levels will gradually be raised by inserting the flash boards in the lower water control structure. You might have noticed this wetland has a curving natural form that fits nicely into the landscape with a peninsula and varied topography of the bed of the pool itself. A rectangular wetland could have been built here. Because this is on a college campus and a highly visible area and many people visit the site, it was important that the wetland be attractive and accommodate other uses. Those other uses include some related to the wetland, such as research and demonstration, and others related to adjacent land uses, including a local cross-country team that uses a site for meets and local residents who often walk in this area. The design and construction of this wetland took into consideration not only the role of the wetland to remove nutrients from the tile water, but also the needs of others using the site, wildlife, and how the wetland fits into the overall landscape. If you would like more information on constructed wetlands or have other conservation questions, contact your local Natural Resources Conservation Service or Soil and Water Conservation District Office.